The film begins in 1979, with a brief flashback establishing the Corleone family's long and tragic history of criminal activity within and by the family. A lot has changed. Michael Corleone, Al Pacino, is approaching 60 and is filled with remorse for succumbing to his ruthless ambition so many years ago. Despite the fact that his previous conquests have made him extremely wealthy, the thoughts of his children, their future, happiness, and his legacy are the only things that keep him going. Tom Hagen, his adopted brother, has died. The Corleone estate in Lake Tahoe has been abandoned and is in disrepair. Michael and Kay, Diane Keaton, divorced in 1959, and Michael gave Kay custody of their two children, Anthony, Frank D'Ambrosio, and Mary, Diane Keaton, Sofia Coppola. Michael has returned to New York City, where he is attempting to re-establish his dignity and reputation in the eyes of the public. The Corleone family's violent criminal element has been largely abandoned, ostracized by Michael as well as the general public, which no longer romanticizes the gangster lifestyle. Michael has embraced corporate America, which is now more tolerant of Michael's nihilism. Using the blood money from his gangster days, he has rebuilt the Corleone interests as a legitimate business. Michael's former thugs and sociopathic soldiers, Al Neri, Willie Chichi, Kahlo, and others, have either died, gone underground, or been relegated to the background, serving as bodyguards for Michael and his family. Michael is now torn between repairing his frail relationships and containing the violent sociopaths who remain a part of his decaying criminal empire. In an effort to break free from the past, Michael establishes the Vito Corleone Foundation in memory of his father. Michael is named a commander of the Order of St. Sebastian at a ceremony in St. Patrick's Cathedral presided over by Archbishop Gilday. Kay, who has remarried, attends the ceremony with Michael's children. Kay and Michael have an awkward reunion at the lavish party that follows the ceremony. Anthony informs his father that he is leaving law school to pursue a career as an opera singer. Kay agrees with him, but Michael wishes his son would finish law school or join the family business. Anthony's wishes are eventually granted by Michael. Meanwhile, Sonny Corleone's illegitimate son, with Lucy Mancini, Vincent Mancini, Andy Garcia, arrives at the party. He is embroiled in a feud with Joey Sasa, Joe Montaigne, the Corleone family's mafioso muscle who has been running the Corleone family's crime businesses in New York for the past 20 years. Zasa now governs what remains of the old Corleone criminal empire. However, the Corleone family's old neighborhood in New York's Lower East Side has fallen into disrepair and has become lawless. Vincent and Zasa tell Michael about their feud in his study. The argument becomes heated, with Vincent accusing Zasa of being an out-of-control monster who makes fun of Michael behind his back. Michael makes it clear that he is not a gangster, and that any feud between Vincent and Joey Zasa is none of his business and must be resolved between them alone. He requests that the two men make peace with one another. Zasa insults Vincent by whispering, Bastardo, in his ear as the two men embrace. Vincent, enraged, 
bites off a portion of Zasa's ear. Zasa is led away, and Michael chastises Vincent for his violent behavior. Michael agrees to take his nephew under his wing after being impressed by Vincent's fierce loyalty to protect him. The celebration concludes with a family photo in which Michael invites Vincent to join the rest of the family. That night, two men break into Vincent's apartment after Vincent has spent the night with Grace Hamilton, Bridget Fonda, a female journalist whom he met at the party. Vincent brutally murders one to frighten the other into revealing Zasa as the man who sent them. Vincent then brutally murders the second man. Later, in an attempt to gain respectability and wealth for the Corleone family through legitimate business, Michael seeks to purchase the Vatican stake in Immobiliare, an international real estate holding company in which the Vatican owns 25%. He negotiates the transfer of $600 million to the Vatican Bank with Archbishop Gilday, who has plunged the Holy See into massive debt due to poor management and corrupt dealings, with the help of his new lawyer B.J. Harrison, George Hamilton. While in Vatican City, Michael learns that several influential parties oppose the deal for many reasons, not the least of which is the extensive criminal history that has tarnished the Corleone name. Because of this, as well as Pope Paul V.I.'s failing health, ratifying the agreement will be far more difficult than he had anticipated. Don Altobello, Eli Wallach, an elderly New York Mafia boss informs Michael that his old New York partners are interested in the Immobiliere deal. A meeting is arranged in the penthouse of a posh hotel in Atlantic City, and Michael, along with Vincent, appeases most of the mafiosi with generous payoffs from their casino days. Zasa, on the other hand, receives nothing. He becomes enraged and declares that Michael is his enemy, telling everyone in the room that they must choose between him and Michael. Zasa storms out of the room. Don Altobello chases him down to confront him about his irrational behavior. A helicopter hovers above the conference room for several minutes, spraying bullets through the ceiling windows. Almost everyone is killed, except for Michael, Vincent, and Michael's long-term bodyguard and capo regime, Al Neri. Back at his apartment in New York, as Michael considers how to respond to this hit, he suffers a diabetic stroke and is hospitalized. During the diabetic attack, in a near delirium, Michael screams out the name of his brother, Fredo, whose murder he had ordered some 20 years earlier. Despite the fact that they are cousins, Vincent and Mary begin a romantic relationship. Unbeknownst to Michael, Vincent plots revenge against Joey Sasa at the urging of his Aunt Connie. During a street fair akin to that scene in The Godfather Part II, Vincent and his associates murder Zasa's bodyguards, and Vincent, disguised as a mounted New York police officer, murders Zasa himself shortly afterwards. When Michael finds out, he berates Vincent, but Vincent insists that he got the go-ahead from Al Neri and Connie, who has become deeply involved in family affairs. Michael insists that Vincent end his relationship with Mary because his involvement in the family jeopardizes Mary's life. Vincent concurs. The family takes a trip to Sicily. Michael instructs Vincent to speak with Don Altobello and, 
in order to determine the old man's loyalties, to inform him of his intentions to leave the Corleone family, claiming that his affair with Mary still exists and that his loyalty to Michael has been supplanted by his desire to continue the relationship. Altabello agrees with Vincent's decision to switch sides and introduces him to Licio Lucchesi, the man behind the plot to prevent Michael from acquiring Immobiliere. Michael meets with Cardinal Lamberto, a well-meaning and devout priest, to discuss the Immobiliere transaction. Lamberto convinces Michael to make his first confession in 30 years. Among other sins, Michael confesses to ordering the killing of his brother Fredo. Michael bursts into tears after confessing. Lamberto tells him that it is just that he suffer, and that while he could tell Michael to repent, he knows Michael would not. Nonetheless, he pardons Michael's sins. Michael begs Kay's forgiveness while touring Sicily and Corleone with her for Anthony's operatic debut. Michael receives word that Don Tomasino, his Sicilian friend and ally of the Corleone family for half a century, has been killed by a famous assassin, indicating that a new round of violence is about to begin. Cardinal Lamberto is elected Pope John Paul I, which means that the Immobiliere deal will almost certainly be ratified because of his intention to clean up the Vatican's dealings. The new Pope's intentions effectively end the plot to ratify the Immobiliere Agreement, prompting frantic attempts by the plotters to cover their tracks. Vincent tells Michael what Altobello has taught him, Lucchesi is behind the plot against the Immobiliere deal, and Altobello has hired Mosca de Montelupar, the man who killed Tomasino, to assassinate Michael. Vincent wants to retaliate, but Michael warns him that if he goes ahead with such a plan, there will be no turning back. Michael relents when Vincent insists on vengeance. He appoints Vincent as the new godfather of the Corleone family. Vincent agrees to put an end to his tumultuous relationship with Mary in exchange for the promotion. The family travels to Palermo to see Anthony perform in Cavalleria Rusticana at the renowned Teatro Massimo. Meanwhile, Vincent plots vengeance against the enemies of the Corleone family. The brutal murders of the Corleone family's enemies are interspersed with scenes from Anthony's performance. Michael Corleone's Halls of Fear theme is mostly heard during the murders. Vincent's men beat up on Kainzig. His body is hung over the bridge to make his death appear to be a suicide. Archbishop Gilday poisoned the Pope's tea. The Pope quickly drinks it and perishes. Don Altobello eats a box of poisoned cannoli served to him by his goddaughter Connie at the opera. As Connie watches through her opera glasses, he dies quietly at the opera. Archbishop Gilday is shot as he climbs a spiral staircase, and his body is thrown down the stairs by Al Neri. Finally, Don Lucchesi is approached by Corleone's button man, Carlo, Franco City, who whispers in his ear, Power wears out those who do not have it, before stabbing him in the throat with his own pair of glasses and killing him. Carlo is immediately assassinated by Lucchesi's bodyguards. Mosca, the assassin hired by Don Altobello to assassinate Michael, storms the opera house during Anthony's performance, killing two of Vincent's men in the process, 
and the opera ends before he has the chance to kill Michael with his rifle. The assassin flees to the opera house facade staircase, where he attempts to shoot Michael. When two shots ring out, Mary is confronting her father about the forced breakup with Vincent. The first grazes Michael's shoulder. The second strikes Mary in the chest, and she dies while saying, Dad? Vincent then dispatches the assassin with a single shot to the chest. Michael screams in primal pain and rage as Kay cradles Mary's bloody body in her arms. The movie ends with a short montage of Michael's memories, the first being a dance with Mary, the second being a dance with his first wife, Apollonia, and the last being a dance with Kay. Many years later, the film concludes with an aged and broken Michael seated in the front yard of his Sicilian villa. He puts on sunglasses slowly, drops an orange from his hand, and collapses to the ground. A small dog sniffs his body as the screen fades to black and the film ends with opening and closing credits shown over Mascagni's Intermezzo from Cavalleria Rusticana. Please subscribe my channel. Thanks for watching.